Hace poco más de un año que apareció la versión 3 de ITIL. Esta actualización ha tomado un nuevo enfoque profundizando en la problemática de los departamentos de tecnologías de la información y proporcionando métricas de rendimiento y ejemplos de flujos de trabajo. Robert Stroud, miembro de la Junta Directiva del ITSMF y director de Estrategia de Marca de CEA, habla con CIO España sobre el presente y futuro de este marco de mejores prácticas para la entrega de servicios TI. So in the bank, you know, I have uh, products and services changing over time and technology is required to deliver them. Last time I checked, the business requirements don't stay the same forever, they change over time. So what you do there is you're running a service, you're running it very well, maybe it's accounts payable uh, or deposits, and over time you have an incident so you know what the severity is and how to fix it. You'll see that there's some requirements to change it, so you'll change it. And what it does is it takes all those processes and factors, external influences and internal, and over time allows you to, to transition that service to be aligned with the business. And I think version 3 looks at that, it concentrates on the business focus. And it helps us as IT professionals do a better job in being business aligned. And that's really the objective. Con la nueva librería se han reducido de 10 a 5 los libros, que según Stroud no hay que cumplir al pie de la letra. There's two or three key points in each of the five books, but the strategy is that you don't need to do all of it. Even though it's a service life cycle, if I'm doing change and configuration management, for example, the books give you good guidance in doing that better. And doing just enough. It's a, it's a term I use a lot. It's just enough. So we just do enough to, to really implement. So in that particular process, you take the part of the book that makes sense of where you are in your maturity model and implement that, not everything. You know, one of the myths of version three is you have to do the whole lot. That's a myth. That's not a reality. Reality is it's a framework. It's a, you take it or leave it. You take the pieces you want and use it and you toss the rest away if you like. En un marco económico como el actual, la adopción de ITIL se ve como una forma de buscar eficiencia operacional. These days we've got large economic pressures to deliver. These large economic pressures require us to do our operations well. It requires us to automate as much as possible and then to determine what's an, what's an exception. So IT in the past had a hero culture. And I know from my own life, you get a phone call at 3 a.m., a system's broken, You get in the phone, you fix it, or you go into the office and fix it, and you deliver value in the system coming back up. You come in in the morning, CIO says, well done, great job. The reality of it is we have to go, for, and we were doing that all the time. We have to move to delivering quality and consistency at the right cost. And we can't consistently go in and fix everything. That says to me that things are broken. So we need to get to a situation where we understand what's important to the business, drive it, automate it and deliver it and keep our valuable human resources, the most important human resource, uh, needs to be kept and maintained for use to, to manage exceptions and value. So one of the points, the key reasons for implementing ITIL are that we can use our resources better, we can be business aligned and we can automate so that we can reduce our operational costs to the lowest reasonable number. No, I didn't say the lowest possible number, I said the lowest reasonable, lowest appropriate number, and that's a key element in managing our finances. El ritmo de adopción de ITIL sigue una buena medida, pero también existen en el mercado otros estándares con los que tiene que convivir. So we've seen massive adoption of ITIL worldwide. In fact, uh, there's a number of surveys that say adoption is well over 50% of large, medium to large organizations. I think uh, ITIL is common sense, that's a term I often use, and we need to consistently deliver or understand that it's common sense. Now in comparison to other frameworks and standards, ISO 20000, which is the IT service management uh, standard, is at its early days of adoption. There's about 400 to 500 organizations worldwide that have adopted that. You see other standards like ISO 9000 series, which is declining in terms of acceptance, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I would have thought it would have continued. And then you see standards like ISO 27000, which is the security management standard. The use of 27000, a series, is growing rapidly worldwide. In fact, many com countries and verticals have legislated for its use. So I think in terms of what we're going to see going forward, is ITIL adoption will remain 
uh, increasing. It will be used. It'll be a de facto framework. But organisations are going to start thinking about how do I prove my organisation, not my individuals, are using the right processes and how can I assure or prove to my business that what I'm doing is correct and we'll see the adoption of things like 20,000 for that. In fact, here in Spain, there are already five organisations that have adopted ISO 20,000, although most of them are services organisations. I'm aware of a large number of corporates that are looking for it to just assure that the services they're delivering are good of an appropriate quality. Muchas empresas aún no han dado el paso a la versión 3, pero la organización responsable de esta guía de buenas prácticas continúa avanzando para adaptarse a las nuevas necesidades y situaciones que se plantean en un entorno de cambio. The strategy around uh, ITIL version 3 is we took a decision with version 3 that should we even do a version 4? We developed a service life cycle, we developed a series of core books, and now we have a series of complementary guidance that we're developing. If we've done it right, which I believe we have, give or take some minor enhancements we'll find over time, and we follow our own continual service methodology and strategy, what we'll do over time is we'll review the, the uh, framework, and rather than replace all of it again, we'll enhance. And we're going to enhance in a number of ways. We're going to enhance through uh, more complementary guidance. So what happens is you take that book and refresh it every couple of years. Fairly simple. Really hard to do, simple to say. So the plan going forward is to support the core with complementary publications, more guidance, more prescription. That'll be in, in uh, books around the core. And where guidance around the core becomes accepted, standard or good practice, We'll integrate that into the appropriate parts of the, the books. And rather than do a version 4, we'll republish the existing books. You can expect better prescriptive guidance over time for your industry vertical with your, you know, your particular environment. For example, there's no reason why we shouldn't have you know, guidance for, for Spain written in Spanish. Other features that we're planning? We're planning more case studies more return on investment analysis, more opportunities for people to share their experience. We're looking at uh, forums and vehicles right now to deliver that, things like the IT Service Management Forum or ITSMF. Right now we have an online forum on the international website so that you can comment or network with professionals, like-minded professionals, to share experience. Ultimately this is about experience sharing and as that experience becomes standard Good practice, we'll incorporate that into the books. And that's the plan going forward. And the other part of the plan is integration with other frameworks and standards. Mm -hmm. Tighter integration with ISO 20000. Uh, there are several publications of ITIL and COBIT. Aún no hay fecha definitiva para esta revisión de V3, si bien ya se están preparando algunos libros complementarios sobre la relación de ITIL y otros estándares para finales de 2008 y principios de 2009.